Hi, Kong is taking a nap, so I thought I'd bake a lemon cake. And this is the best lemon cake in the world, and I thought maybe I would have you do it with me. So, first of all, we're gonna make the lemon curd, which is the filling for the cake. So inside this bowl, I have eight egg yolks, one and a half cups of sugar, half a stick of butter, and three lemons, which I have juiced and zested. Make sure you get just the zest and not the pith, otherwise it gets really bitter. Okay, now I'm gonna take the bowl, and I'm just gonna place it over the top of some boiling water, making sure that the water doesn't actually touch the bottom of the bowl. And I'm just gonna cook it until it's thick. You just wanna keep it stirring constantly, um, not briskly, but just keep it moving so that the uh, egg yolks don't cook and curdle. The good thing about the fact that we're using it inside of a cake is if it curdles a little bit, we won't have to strain it because it's just the filling for the cake, so it's okay. If you don't want to go through the trouble of making your own lemon curd, you can just buy some, but it tastes much better if you make it fresh, and it's really not that hard. It's thick ish. We'll take it off the heat and we'll let it cool. This cake uses a lot of eggs, so it's definitely not vegan friendly. And there's also butter in it. So if you're a vegan, just try something else. Don't even try to convert this recipe, it won't work. Today is not be kind to vegan day. Starting to thicken up a little bit here. We've got probably a couple more minutes to go. If you're making lemon curd that you're not using for filling and you want it really nice, um, making sure that there's no curdles in it, what you can do is you can actually cream the butter and sugar together first and then add the egg yolks one at a time, just like you're making a cake. Uh, and then add the lemon juice and the grated lemon zest at the end and then put that in the bowl and bring it up to the over, over the heat. And, uh, and then again, if there's any curdling, you can just strain it afterwards, and it's a beautiful, beautiful lemon curd. But like I said, this is gonna be inside of a cake. Nobody will notice it, so we're not gonna bother with any of that. Okay, I'm gonna just transfer this into another bowl to help cool it off a little bit and stick it in the fridge. And again, if it gets a little skim or anything like that on it, it's no big deal, because we're sticking it in between layers of a cake. This is what it looks like. When it's still hot, we're gonna stick it in the fridge. Okay, now that the lemon curd is chilling away, hopefully it'll firm up real well, otherwise we'll do something with it, um, where it's time to make the cake. So as a rule of thumb, when you're making any kind of, doing any kind of baking, if you treat it as if it were nuclear materials or something like you're dealing with explosives or something like that, and are very, very precise and very, very careful, chances are you'll come out with a really good end product. Uh, it's not like cooking where you can just kind of guess here and there and, and put a dash of this and a dash of that. Uh, your baking recipes are actual formulas and you want to treat them like scientific formulas and if you're very careful about how you measure and your method usually you'll come out with a decent product. So we're preheating the oven to 350 degrees. As you can see I've separated four eggs and I'll set those aside. And I've torn up two medium pieces of kitchen parchment. So we want three cups of sifted flour and I like to sift the flour right into the measuring cup in these uh, particular types of cake recipes so that the, the uh, cake doesn't get dry. That way you're not overdoing the flour. See, I have this, you know, this sifted flour right into the cup and I just level it off with a knife like that. And then I just dump that onto this parchment and I'm gonna repeat that two more times so I have three cups of sifted cake flour. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not cake flour, it's three cups of sifted all-purpose flour in this recipe. So that's three cups of sifted cake flour. Okay, right on top of this I'm measuring four teaspoons of baking powder. And on top of that, we will add a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and I'm just going to take this and I'm going to stick it in here and sift it. And I'm going to do that three whole times so that these ingredients get very, very well mixed. Et voila! Dry ingredients are all beautifully mixed together. Now I just need to grease and flour three 
nine inch baking pans. And you know what I do? I use the, the spray on stuff that's got flour already added. It works just as well. These straight sided aluminum pans by Chicago Metal or Chicago Metallic it are the best pans I've ever found. Okay, now I've greased and floured this pan using just the spray with flour. And I've got these rounds of parchment. And you can get them pre cut so you don't have to cut them in. Cut them out, I should say. Just stick it in the bottom of the pan, and then you're going to spray that again. Okay, inside the mixer, I have two sticks of butter, unsalted. And I'm just going to cream this two sticks of butter, unsalted butter, until it's really light and fluffy before I start adding the sugar. And now I'm going to start to slowly add two cups of sugar. one at a time. And I'm gonna make sure that it's fully incorporated uh, each time before I add the next yolk. I'm gonna get a nice scraping of the sides and of the beater. And then we'll go ahead and, and put that on a medium high speed and beat it again for just about 30 seconds. stand for just a second because I'm going to go ahead and whip up my four egg whites. I want them stiff but not dry. Is about right? Okay, now we're going to add the dry ingredients alternately to the egg and butter mixture. Alternate. Can't forget to add the vanilla to this egg and butter mixture before we go on. Okay, so I've got my sifted dry ingredients, a cup of milk, and the egg, butter, and vanilla sugar. Sugar, egg, butter, and vanilla mixture. And we are going to alternately add the flour and the milk to the egg, butter, and sugar. You want to beat just until incorporated after each addition, you start with the flour and you end with the flour. You start with the dry and you end with the dry. Now is the time you don't want to beat too much because that'll uh, build the gluten up in the flour and that makes for a very tough cake. So the beating is at a very minimum. than overmix because you can finish the rest by hand. Otherwise you, you don't want it you don't want to work it too hard. Okay, so I'm just gonna start to mix this a little bit by hand. Make sure to scrape it all down. And we just plop those egg whites on top of the whole thing. Plop. We're gonna fold that in and it's just a matter of cut, fold, cut, fold. It's like a figure eight. Just want to make sure that all these little egg whites are disappeared. We don't want, we want them to be incorporated fully, but we don't want to deflate them. We want to try to make nice even layers, so I've got a little trick for that. Just take your cup, measure, measure the same amount in each layer pan. We're going to make three layers here. Just going back and forth like that. All right, so they're fairly even, you know, as even as you can make them. It's not a big deal if they're not perfect, perfect, because it's all going to get frosted. And into the oven they go. We bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes. I'll go ahead and set the timer for 20 and take a, uh, a look at them. Basically for about as much time as it takes to clean the kitchen is about how long it takes to bake the layers. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. They're looking nice, but they're not quite done yet, as you can see. I don't want to keep it too open, but the, they've risen up beautifully, 
but they're just not quite pulling away from the sides of the pan yet, so we're gonna give them another three to five minutes. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. Let's take a look at these babies. See how that's point just pulling away from the sides of the pan just barely? It's about perfect, okay? So we're gonna just take these and put them on their cooling racks in the pan for a good 10 minutes. Let them cool in the pan for 10 minutes. Try to take them out too soon and they'll break apart. best frosting. It's my favorite frosting. It's a seven minute frosting. And so what we're doing here, a stainless steel bowl here, I have uh, one and a half cups of sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon cream of tartar, an eighth of a teaspoon salt, and then in this bowl here I've got uh, two egg whites, a third of a cup of water, and a, table of, a tablespoon of corn syrup. I'm just going to add these two together. Set the timer for one minute. And we're going to beat it for exactly one minute. Okay, I've got some water boiling. I'm going to set this on top of the water, set my timer for seven minutes, and beat for exactly seven minutes on top of the water. beautiful frosting in the world. Okay, so here's our first layer on some little pieces of parchment. Okay, so now I'm putting that lemon filling in the first layer. And then I'm going to take the second layer and put it right on top. It's a little broken, that's okay. We're going to just glue it all together. All will be well. rest of this lemon filling on the top. Go ahead and close. Alright, and then we're going to take this last layer and stick it right on the top. Yeah. Now we're ready to frost it. Go ahead and pause. What I'll do is I'll take this frosting and I'm just going to frost the sides first. And I'm just going to put a layer around the sides. Kind of seal it in. Oh, if there's any crumbs, it'll get sealed in, and then I can put another layer on top of that to make it look pretty. This kind of cake, if there's a little bit of crumb and stuff on it, it's okay because it makes it nice and homemade looking. It's not like we're making a wedding cake. Okay, put some more of this nice frosting on the top. Look how easy this is to work with. This is literally the world's best frosting that you'll ever, ever, ever use. And there's no fat in the frosting, which is good because there's a lot of fat in the cake. Okay. Gently take these little papers out. And if there's more frosting, we'll just take a little wet rag and fix the bottom. And there you have it the world's best lemon cake. Mm -hmm.